there. On the Warriors tonight, best player on the floor, maybe. Uh, over Wemby, some huge stops on Wemby Yama in, in crunch time there. So, uh, dude, I don't. This is kind of why the Warriors will never quit Draymond. I don't think you and I will ever quit Draymond as long as he's just doing shit like this. It makes it's absurd what he's doing every game. It's 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 he's still one of the greatest defensive players of all time in the world right now. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's hilarious because at halftime the volume tweets out a promo for Draymond's episode dropping tomorrow with Mark Cuban. Uh, and, and I saw it and I was just like, ah, they're losing tonight. Just classic Warriors pre consumed, you know, just kind of throwaway troll tweet. And I get Draymond's producer responding to me later. Our shout out Jackson going, admit it, Sam, this is the turning point. He is right. Credit or credit due. The volume tweeting out the promo of Draymond and Mark Cuban that ignited the run right there. That's it. We need more Draymond podcasts to save the season. That is. The problem has not been too many podcasts. The problem has been not enough podcasts. Is uh is Draymond is is Mark Cuban a bigger get than LeBron? Are we are we we like that one? It's it's uh so why Draymond's locked in, right? He got Mark Cuban on there. They're gonna fake talk business for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, I thought that was some of the best ball Draymond's played in a while. Um, I don't know, man. It, in some ways. I don't know how much I even want to go into the game because we've seen the game before that the Spurs just played harder than them. They played smarter and harder than them the first half. They're not a more talented team. No Devin Vassell, no Keldon Johnson, no Jeremy Sohan, the three fifths of their starting lineup. And it's not like they have a super talented roster to begin with. Uh, they did have Wemby who it's not like those guys are any good, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> besides Wemby, Vassell, besides Vassell. Wemby, yeah. Wemby's pretty special, but no, yeah. I, no, I agree. No, no, no. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I'm saying like, it's yeah. actually better for them to play through Wemby and like not ever make, not ever let Sohan or Wemby or Kelton Johnson touch the ball. Like I actually like that. I enjoy that sure. version of the Spurs better. But anyway, sorry. Good. Yeah. Go ahead. Though. Yeah. And, and and what was the first half of the game? Just Spurs playing harder. But you know, Draymond ignited them in the second half. <laughs> first twenty ten game in God knows how long for Draymond. Six steals. I mean, it's it, it it just vintage Draymond. It was. It was. I'm going to take over the game in a million different ways. You know, it's coming. If anything, I hope Draymond does something dumb right before the plan, because then you guarantee yourself in the plan, he's going to do something no one's ever seen before and take over a game. Right? He's got it. He's got to atone for his mistakes. Uh, <laughs> happy Easter Sunday. Right. So, <laughs> so for Draymond atoning for his mistake a few games ago, the comments are bringing up that, you know, anytime Draymond does some dumb stuff, you know, which happens uh, hopefully just once a month now. He's going to play great after. And, you know, it's right. It's right. Can we just read out his stat line? Eight for nine, two for two from three. Hits a game-clinching free throw at the end. He has 21 points, which in and of itself is amazing. He has five turnovers for them in the first half. And he has 11 assists, six rebounds, six steals. Mm -hmm. And the end one block. And, and, and essentially that, that steal on Wemby was the one that kind of just uh, the thing with Wemby is he's amazing on offense but he's still kind of in that in-between area on offense where he's not super comfortable going to a jump shot in crunch time. right oh he's 20 years old so when he tries to drive Draymond knew he was going to drive and he's helping off of he's helping TJD and then he just swipes it away and you're just sitting there it's like dude how many times have we seen that Sam you and I all Warriors fans everyone listening how many times have we seen Draymond make that steal it's 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 unbelievable don't, that he, don't that he sit in no man's it. land against Draymond you're, <laughs> right. just, you're just gonna always get taken no yeah no. and that's kind of look a lot of the season is I feel like I want to see them have a strong finish to the season no one thinks this team's gonna go on a major run I honestly I think back to what our guy Waz said. He's like, just make the playoffs would be a success for this team. And I, I think I agree with him. Uh, get out of the play and be in a playoff series, see what happens. I will consider that a success given where they've been. Uh, but the part that's also exciting for me is like just kind of thinking about this team and in, in construct of, okay, it's two years in a row. They've been kind of this lethargic 500 team, which like at moments looks good but we know is not a real team two years in a row. You, you kind of, you have to stop saying like, Oh, it's just a little bit. No, it's just kind of who you are. Right. Which means there's going to be big changes in the off season, which means I'm evaluating all these players kind of over the lens of who do you want to bring back? 
versus who uh, you know who who's who are you okay being in trade packages, right? Like that sort of thing. Uh, and as frustrating as Draymond is, and I know as much as everyone wanted to get rid of him midweek, this is why it's a more complicated question than than just like, ah, oh, he's over, he's, he's, he's hothead, he does this, he does that. It's like, you know what? He's like one of the only guys I can trust when the moment counts to literally just to have the balls to play in those type of moments and and also just the IQ. That's the other part of it. Like you, you mentioned the steal. <laughs> If it was that easy, a lot of other players would do it. And you know what? They don't. He's he sees the game faster than anyone else. Yeah. Um he's not someone I think it's pretty obvious no matter what happens he's going to be on this team. <laughs> uh uh really if you go through the lens of the uh, of crunch time it's funny because the three biggest plays uh or sorry the three biggest players in crunch time was obviously Steph who made a bunch of shots and then actually had quite a few bad shots or, or excuse me turnovers draymond obviously we talked about the rebounds that he got but one of the offensive rebounds who does it go to who does he pass it to to hit one of the biggest threes actually the biggest three of the game is clay so it, it's it's funny uh to me that those were really the three guys that made those crucial plays in crunch time i, I actually think you can argue that even tjd probably needs to be playing in crunch. like one of the big 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 things about tjd when you talk about evaluating someone that i think should probably stay on this team and even play more minutes moving forward is they need tjd to play next to draymond draymond is not especially at this point in his career like you can't just put him at the five with nobody else around him that plays defense and so that's really the thing to me it's like man is it, watching tjd be able to at least put a body on Wemby is uh makes makes Draymond's life so much easier so he can roam, get steals, all that stuff that he does better than everyone else, right? So that's kind of the uh that's what I saw tonight that I was extremely um I was optimistic about. Like that stuff makes me yeah. like at least giddy moving forward. <laughs> no, nothing like it. But it's just like, man, those two guys, are those two guys your four five? Cause I'm I kind of like it, Sam, especially defensively. Yeah. No, I I mean Trace has been awesome. The last month plus, uh, <laughs> throughout the stats on the old Twitter, I mean, he's averaging like a double double in 24 minutes. The energy speaks for itself. Uh, gets his hands on a bunch of stuff, gets a lot of blocks and steals, and uh, finishes at, like he, he's polished. Also, like the thing I really like about him is he knows who he is and he knows who he isn't. So he's like the best version of that rim roller can make the second pass uh can switch a little bit can kind of play off like he's not trying to like take the ball and like prove he has one-on-one -on -one game or do like he knows who he is and and i think that's a big part of it it's like figure out your role and just figure out how you can be the best version of the player in that role uh 18 points the other night on on friday night kind of doing the same thing right just there's nothing impressive he has great feel around the rim now mm -hmm. we're turning to Draymond segment off the top into a, a TJD segment. Um, but just the feel around the rim, like he's going up with it no matter what. It always goes in. I don't actually understand sometimes how he gets the angles. He shoots them from super weird angles. Honestly, it just tells me that that's a guy that's just been doing it forever. I didn't watch yeah. him in Indiana, but I assume that this is exactly what he was doing in Indiana. I I, I imagine that he wasn't shooting threes in Indiana, right? He's probably yeah. not doing what he was doing. He's probably doing the exact same thing. Uh, and really, like the point of stuff is, is like you think about what happened with Wiseman. This is not really a knock on Wiseman, uh, because we've done that enough. It's just a difference in 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 who a player wants to be and how they how they are going to be uh, useful as an NBA player. TGD knows what it's going to make him useful as an NBA player. Set a screen, rim run, finish, play pretty good defense. That's that's all. It's all he needs, and he's going to be in the NBA for a, a long time. Like I, I'm not sitting here saying he's this amazing player, but he is a perfect fit for the system. We just watched the ending of the Knicks, like. Isn't Hartenstein just gonna have a super long career? Because he just kind of just does the just, just those little sure. things just really well. He just passes great screen well. center, great <laughs> screen center, great passer, rebounder, all that stuff, right? Yeah, protects the rim to the best of his ability. Gonna finish inside. You know, to your point, like, and I think that's the other part of it. It's like when I look at the Warriors, and we can talk about this more in the offseason, We're gonna probably have time to. Uh, they do probably need a true number two to alleviate pressure off of Steph. Steph had another phenomenal game tonight, but it's like, I don't know, you look at every team in the playoffs, they got two bona fide guys who could go for 40 
any given night. And you look at the Warriors and it's Steph and a bunch of dudes who fill the gaps for the most part. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, and I know it's like very kind of sexy to just talk about like how they need a number two. They also need just guys around it. Cause like the Lakers have a great top two and they have nothing really around it. So, uh, you know, the Trace Jackson Davises of the world, the Pajemskis, the Moody, who we're going to talk about a little bit. In a minute. Like you also, you need both. You need both. You need to get a second star to go around stuff, but you also need to have the requisite amount of like, athleticism size and just rotational value around your two guys otherwise you're just gonna like i don't i don't mean to pick on the lakers well a little bit but like you know they're kind of like okay everyone in the world would want lebron and ad on their team but do you really want any other lakers do you want d do you want Rui hachimura do you like like that that's the epitome of like okay you figured out the top two parts you have nothing else i <sighs> That's a, such an interesting argument. This that was like an off season topic. Whereas, mm-hmm. I I, I kind of would rather have that because I, well, it's, I it's would not about have it's not model, it's not about but... either or. It's like you want both, right? Yeah. Well, that's there's a reason why those two teams are nine and ten. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because there's, <laughs> yeah. there's a reason why both teams suck. Um, both teams are doing it differently, but they both are not good. Um, even though the Lakers are playing well, quote unquote, right now. But like, let's be real. Right? They're gonna have to mm-hmm. go through the playing to do that. Uh, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, let's get. We'll, we'll get to the. We'll get to more of the the separate players. Moses Moody and we got a, like a good debate going on a little bit mm-hmm. later on after this. But the Light Years Podcast. We are brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. I am going to opening day. The San Francisco Giants versus the San Diego Padres, and uh, I got them off Game Time. Uh, good thing is I could see the seat immediately. Saw the prices immediately. Super easy UI um uh best price uh guaranteed all that fun stuff um so you can see the view from your seat before you buy you know exactly what what to expect when you arrive all in prices show your total up front uh so you don't get any uh you don't get any crazy uh, uh surprises at the end when you're checking out uh, and you know that you're getting a great deal uh you can buy your tickets in seconds with two taps uh, game times have has deals on tickets right up to the starter event and even an hour after it starts it's the place to find last minute tickets and last minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, baseball, basketball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and roll for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code light years for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code. L I G H T Y E A R S for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Nice, nice. And we are brought to you by Unified. Whether you're a world class athlete or a podcaster like us, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well being and proper recovery for top notch performance. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by energy enhancement system or EE system. If you haven't heard of EE system yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation, whether you're here in the Bay Area or hundreds of other locations across the globe. Access to a center is easy and affordable. Interested interested in experience the EE system technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash light years to learn more and find a center near you. That's you and I F Y D healing.com slash light years. No material or testimonials on the unified healing website are intended to be uh, viewed as medical advice or substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the tr- advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regimen, including the EE system. Nice. Um, so the Rockets also lost tonight, by the way. See that? Love that. We love that. My MVP, Luca, by the way. Just throwing it out there. Uh, honestly, mm. it's kind of weird because I don't think anyone's run away. Like, Jokic is probably the best player in the league. But they've been kind of half-assing it all year. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, like it's not like Denver's playing. Like, we're gonna d- d- shut everyone up and get seventy wins. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. exactly. Like, so 
I, I think Luca has been the most impressive player for the most part of this entire season, but <laughs> yeah, he looked dominant tonight. He shut Houston's 11 game win streak down. And so now we're here. This is a big week for the Warriors because the Warriors play the Mavs on Tuesday. We'll be okay. here. Okay. The Houston Rockets, which will be a big game for the Warriors on Thursday. And then the Mavs again on Friday. So big week for the Warriors right now. Um, Houston losing buys them two games over the Rockets, which means if they lose Tuesday to the Mavs, they're just in the same position they are. Uh, and on the on the flip side, they kind of got the Lakers coming up a week after that, and they're not that far off the Lakers while owning the tiebreaker. Oh, we are doing the this time. again. Uh-oh. They own the tiebreaker, and I also just I, – it's worth calling out. The Kings just lost a couple players. They, they lost Herder. They lost Malik Monk. Mm. They've been pretty unimpressive. I think they, I mean, they have space so they can lose a little bit, but it's not out of the realm that the Warriors move up. It's not. I'm looking at the whole standings here. The Phoenix Suns, who are the seven seed, have the toughest schedule going. It's just like Minnesota. OKC, Denver, Dallas, Minnesota, like a lot of that type of stuff. Uh, I don't know. Where, where are you at the Warriors here? Because I, I'm looking at this. I think it's, I think we can all admit they're not getting out of the plan, but there is opportunity to move up in the plan. Um, we were just talking about them a couple of weeks ago, getting the six seed. Then a couple of days ago, we were talking about them. Falling out of the 10 seed behind the <laughs> Houston Rockets. No, I'm just – I'm not making fun. Sure. I'm just, it's funny. And now we are – wow, we are going to – it's April the 1st tomorrow when most people are listening. Uh, uh, and the Warriors are going to be two games and, and, and ahead of the Rockets, and they're right behind, like you just said. <sighs> okay, and now you're moving to the schedule, and we're at the end here. We're, we're, at, we're at the end game. Eight left. Yes. Eight games left. And, uh, and they play at the end of the season – the Portland, Portland and Utah, which is kind of two gimme games. So really, Sam, here's what I think. I think if they win, and I, this probably isn't going to happen, but if they go 4-0 this week, they end up out of the play-in. Out. As in, as in, the, as in they're a six seed. Oh, wow. But, but again, that means they have to win Dallas, Houston, Dallas, and then Utah. Two, two Dallas Ws, including one on a back-to-back on the road. Yep. Yeah, it's and, and that's that's what I'm saying. It's not happening. But like the other thing is like I'm also looking at Portland, New Orleans. Are they resting guys? Because they, they're they're playing right. And then Utah, those are wins. Like I'm counting some wins. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm just so I'm saying if they go four and zero, and and I, again I understand that it's 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 Dallas, Houston, Dallas, Utah. But you win those, you win those four games. Whew. Yeah, I mean, are we back? I don't know if we're back, but. The Warriors have a chance here for real. Have a what chance do they... to actually do to, to, to be in the play. Yeah. All right. So eight, eight games left, mm -hmm. 40 and 34. They're actually pacing to have a better record than they had last year. And they have the six oh, seed. That's hilarious. But more or less the same. Also, like, let's be real. 45 versus 44 is not really substantial. It's the same team. Uh, sort of. What do you, cons what do they need to do in these final eight games to guarantee they hold the plan. Like how many wins out of the final eight? And then how many wins out of the final eight do they need to get into that seven, eight game to give themselves two Man, shots? That's tough. To make, Cause, yeah. cause you know what I'm saying? It's one thing to make the plan in the eight and the nine, 10, but then you need to rip off two wins. That's pretty fucking tough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you're saying like, how do you like, forget the nine, 10, forget the six. Like I'm, I'm getting crazy with the six. Just get seven. Can you get eight? Seven, eight, seven, eight. eight. Get in the seven, yeah, right. Get in the eight. seven, eight to give yourself two games to make right. the playoffs. Right, right. Um, let me Six go back. Wins? To the, let me go Six. back to the standings just to give you an idea of where everyone's sitting. You think six wins gets you the eight seed? Because currently the Kings are forty-two and thirty-one, which means oh, they God, would have man. to go four and f no, they'd have to go three and six because they have the tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I might have to take that back. You might, hey, producer Tim, you might have to, you might have to say, <laughs> you if you win four in a row, I think they're gonna get the the seven seed. Because <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, they 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 probably need to win six ish, seven maybe, and get some help. 
and get a little help, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like uh, you know, yeah. pulling up the because right, right now they're playing. They got to beat the Lakers, and, and well, you know, maybe they end up playing the Kings. You're right. You're right. Nine. Maybe they end up playing the Suns. But either way, they they're, they're going on the road. Although you know, they just won four games in a row on the road. I get albeit against you know maybe not so great. The teams. roads the roads are good for them. Better There's for them like, at yeah. home. They suck at home at least this season, right? I think they need to win seven. Yeah, and then they go seven and one, yeah. and they need a little luck. Seven and one means they'll beat the Lakers, most likely, which means they have the Laker tiebreaker, uh, and then they would need one of the Kings or Suns to not even free fall, just like be kind of low par mediocre the rest of the way, right? Like, and the Suns could do it. I'm looking at the Suns schedule right now. It's like uh, they're playing the Pelicans right now as we're recording it. Cavs. Wolves, Pelicans, Clippers, Clippers, Kings, Wolves. Like it's 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 a lot of like they're probably gonna split all those games. They're probably gonna end up at 46, 47 wins. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Man, seven wins. I kind of think I kind of think you're right, actually. So uh, uh, they they've put themselves in a position where you know it, it's not it's not games that they they like that Minnesota game on the road is, is like, man, they're, they're not winning that game, even if they play really, really well. Like, I don't see those games on the schedule. Like, I, I don't see you can say they could win all those games, but then, you know, you go, but you go back the other way and you're like, well, I could also see them just lose in Dallas twice this week. I mean, mm-hmm. Dallas is playing really well. And that, that wouldn't surprise me. You, you brought up Dallas as a kind of pseudo sleepy con- or sleeper contender. And it's like, well, well, maybe shit, maybe they are. At this point, that's that's how well they're playing, and uh, they've got them twice. They're playing excellent basketball. And on the Kings front, just to throw us in, they're playing the, the Jazz right now. They're probably going to win that one. But then Clippers, go to New York, go to Boston, go to Brooklyn, go to OKC, home against the – like, like, this is – the Warriors definitely have the easier stretch of all these teams the rest of the way, but they also uh, – they have a lot of ground to make up, you know, like that's the thing. Like they, they probably, I'm looking at it this way. They need to win against Dallas on Tuesday. And then I might, I might buy that they could sneak it off. But GSW fan 07 says it perfectly. They dug themselves a hole. It is what it is. You know, they're kind of in a hole right now. Yeah, it is. I mean, a lot of these teams have 31, 30, 31 ish losses, mm-hmm. 29 losses. Like, I mean, how many times can you say the Warriors cost themselves? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten wins this season. If you want, even if you don't want to get crazy about ten wins they've cost themselves, you can definitely count four. Just, just, just you can just count four off the bat where they be right. We say that all the time. So that's yeah. that's who the Warriors have been this season. So I do think it's a big week, and it'll be a fun week for this team in general. Like I do want to see them. I do want to see them make the playoffs. I want to see. I want to see changes in the off season, but that doesn't mean I don't want to see them finish the year strong. No. Like in general, like I don't, I don't know what strong means, but I don't want to watch Steph and Draymond go home uh, before the play in limp it. Like that's sad. I don't want that. You know? Well, you know, those guys are on fumes right now, which is the crazy part about this. Steph, Steph was on fumes tonight. He was mm-hmm. really good. Draymond uh, was on fumes, but I think getting kicked out of a game here and, and getting pumped up tonight at halftime got him going again but i think you know these guys are on fumes these guys are not like we've rested a week or two and they're ready to go uh like let's go right we watched the lakers the other night get blown out by the pacers it's like man they are on fumes uh they just these older teams are just are just going to be not as as lit up as kind of like the thunder where, where they're going, getting after it every single night but at the same time you're also saying well steph has freaking 33 tonight he looked amazing he looked unbelievable steph did tonight and and that's that's part of what makes these guys so good. Clay shoots shoots a terrible game and then hits that game clinching shot. Isn't that just Clay mm-hmm. in a nutshell? These yeah. guys. So, you know. Um, let's do prize picks before. All right, let's do let's do. Okay, we are brought to you the Light Years Podcast by Prize Picks. Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action. Uh, while you watch your favorite sports and players, you just pick more. Or less on two of your more player stat, two or more player stats. Watch the winning winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100x your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn ten dollars into a thousand with NBA, 
NHL college basketball entries today on Price Picks America's number one fantasy sports app. Whether it's tournament season, we are in the final four, and I've found a favorite player. Uh, you can go on Price Picks, pick more or less on DJ Burns Jr. if that's what you want to do. Uh, there are no shortage of high stakes basketball moments moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Price Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your latest hoops knowledge into serious cash. Uh, do you want to you want to play alongside some of Price Picks' favorite players like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean? O'Malley. All right. We got some MMA in here. You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize picks communities. Each week, prize picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play. Even if one of your players gets injured for basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second prize picks have your back and not count that as a loss. So download the app today. Use code light years for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars download the app today use code light years for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars pick more pick less it's that easy let's get to the goons we're in the money end of the actually let me ask you this how are you enjoying the men's tournament how are you enjoying the ncas i can we can we expand that to ncaa tournament men's men's and women's can we do that can oh i know <laughs> everyone's i was i had two thoughts on it because i think okay. everyone's go, go, you go for the women's tournament on yes. monday you go first. Um, but the men's tournament was playing today, which is why I was asking. Yeah. Um, I thought I thought the games were good. I actually enjoyed the uh, the NC State game was fun. Um, I was I had an argument yesterday with with a friend of mine. We were at uh we were just at a at a birthday party and we were watching the college game. So they're coaches, right? They coach high school teams, and uh they were asking me, like, hey, you never like, coach, bro. <laughs> well, they asked me, um, it's actually my boy's girlfriend, and so she coaches. And she was like, oh, you don't watch college basketball. And I was just like, I don't like it. Like, I just, I don't think there's, it's, it's boring to me. And, and she made an interesting point to me. And she said, well, we love it. Like, we love it. I like watching it more than than men's basketball, NBA especially, because it's more of a team game. And, I, and I'm telling her, like, well, there's a lot more skill in the NBA. And she's like, yes, there is. But, and she's talking about both men and women's college Correct. basketball. She's like, most of the time, it's just a guy playing mismatch hunting and, and essentially playing heliocentric ball. And I'm kind of sitting there. I'm like, well, you, that is a really good point because these guys oh, are it's so factual. Yeah. Right. It's it's just so true that, hey, if that's what you like, that's what you like. If 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 Luca getting out there and just just going for 55 like he does every other night and he just passes the ball to, to, to a guy to shoot a three because, you know, that that's about what it is. But where in the college basketball, it's it's they actually they actually have to play kind of Steve Kerr offense because they have to. No guy is good enough to do that. So <laughs> <laughs> no one dropping 15 threes in a game. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Nobody's good enough. So I, I get I, maybe that's your standard college versus NBA argument, though. I, I just I find it hard sometimes just to watch college where where guys just aren't good enough. They just end up passing the ball in the perimeter around a lot, and then it's a post up. But you know, that's I, I the DJ Burns is the guy that I ended up loving watching. That's the guy where I was like, okay, I could watch this freaking dude all day long, all day long, Sam. That's my guy. I, I personally enjoy both, but I do like know what I'm getting into with both. And yeah. with that said, the tournament is unmatched because it's 99% of the players you're watching in the tournament. This is the biggest game they're ever going to play in their lives. And they play it that hard. And like, that's just fun to watch, you know, uh, in general. But like, to your point, the NBA is just much more skillful. So I don't know. I, I can get behind all of it. It's all fun. But with that said, like the tournament's just, I don't know, man, how, how single elimination, single elimination. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is. Yeah. It's like watching right. people try to figure it out the entire way. Like it's not even about the quality of the game as much as just the intensity, intensity the entire way. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can yeah. I, one thing I, 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 uh, one thing I thought of too is I was, so I was watching the women's LSU game on Saturday yeah. And then I watched Caitlin Clark after. And mm -hmm. one thing I one thing I really because I watched all the men's stuff and 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 same with you, like maybe sure. that dude crying and stuff. And Zach Eady today was like pumped up after the game. The thing, the thing that that I wish we're gonna get to see, and I don't know if this will ever get changed, is that dude, I watched the best woman's player play on Saturday. Then Paige Beckers, who I just learned who that was, is I guess the second best woman's player play on Sunday. And and that LSU team, Angel Reese is probably like a top 10 pick or something like that. 
So we're watching all the best players. And then USC has this player that that's also going to be another Juju's amazing player. Prime. Juju, Juju's right? Amazing. Yeah. She's 18, so she's a freshman. So we're watching all these amazing women's players that will be in the WNBA or at least top five picks versus the men's where – let me tell you, like when I watch Zach Eady and 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 that Purdue team looks looks pretty damn good. Yeah, just, like like I know I'm just saying I'm just saying that's the only thing. I'm but just you saying, know like, you like, know Zach what it is. I would like to see I, who's the number one pick. Who's the number one pick? Alex Zar, right? I just would like to see him. I never even seen the guy. I don't even know who that guy is. I don't even know what he looks like. Is he seven feet tall? If you told me he was five eleven, Sam, I believe you. I'm just Chet's, that's just all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Chet is the same age as Caitlin Clark. And Angel Reese. I think it's that simple. I think it's in the women's game. They stay three, four, four years every time. Oh. So, like, like we all saw Caitlin Clark two years ago. Or, like, who's this girl pulling up from Steph Rage? And then she came back another year. And then mm-hmm. she came back another year. So, it's a whole thing. The men's game, we all saw Chet as a freshman. Or, like, oh, he's an interesting player. Goes pro. We you didn't even Kate use them the right way either, though. That's a thing. But, but, but that's my point. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody who Tyrese Maxey. <laughs> nah, he's one year too much. It's just, sorry. Um, Kuminga. Kuminga would should still be in college if we're using that type of logic. I know. And, I know. And, and so I, that's kind of, I, I think it's really that simple. I think it's as simple as like you have now. Over the course of two to three years, the top women's players, you've like learned to know who they are. You've followed their teams. You've developed like you like them. You hate whatever it is like you've developed that. Whereas with the men's players, like, oh, he's good. Okay, he's pro. Later. Yeah, like, you know, oh, okay. Or they're not playing somewhere we know. That's sure. that's the other thing. We're not playing sure. somewhere we know them. And you're right. So Reed Shepard's a top five pick. So okay, so he bou- gets bounced in the in the whatever this season. We don't even I don't even get to see him in March Madness. But like yeah, to your point, like he would be playing next season. Yeah, we we would know like Shepard six overall or something, right? You know. Yeah. And 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 you like you were excited to see Reed Shepard because you heard about him. You're like, all right, let's see March Madness. Let's see him. Has one bad game, bounced from the tournament, and now he's gonna go pro. And it's just like, all right, it's gonna take you all of next year to figure out who the hell Kentucky has again. So yeah, it's right. just kind of like the nature of college. Sport. And, and like the other part of it is even if guys stay, they'll probably transfer a little bit. So yeah. I, I don't know. It's the hard. men's game. I just try like to your point, Zach, he, he's like, uh, it's cool, but like he stayed for four years for a reason, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Trace is a four year player. We know Fitz loves the four year guys, but it's like, <laughs> It's because they weren't good enough to go pro after this. Sure, freshman, right? right. Whereas, like, yeah. if you had that same culture in the women's game, Caitlin Clark would have gone pro after one year, right? The girl, so. that that girl from UConn, that Paige girl that I was talking about, she's going. Paige she's UK not said? even. I don't. She's not even going pro. She's would going she make? Would she make more? And well, that, I'm not. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying, like, she's she's not I mean, going pro. She's staying in college, which is. And and I and I and my boy who watches women's basketball, and he's he's sitting next to me. He's telling me that. He's telling me that she's better than Caitlin Clark. <laughs> she's like, yeah, she's a better player than Caitlin Clark. And she's not even going pro. And I'm just like, man, that's crazy. That's crazy. So anyway, I, I enjoy from I'm I respect I respect the argument, but like the take. You're like, he's a takesman. I respect that. I'm not arguing one way or the other. I, I just uh I it's not, like it's not an unpopular opinion to think like she might be better than like like Caitlin, Caitlin Clark gets the uh the Harden where she plays with terrible players. So she gets to stat pad a little bit, you know, but you know, she shoots a lot. I thought it was pretty funny, I, but she's really good passer. I thought it was, I was like, man, she's got a high it's usage rate. I was thinking about player. this from an NBA perspective. I'm like, let's, let's not be toxic. Again. Let's all enjoy the game. I enjoy watching. I enjoy watching as someone that doesn't watch college basketball anymore. I just enjoy watching top prospects play. That's all I care about. It's sure. really all I care about. Yeah. So, but, but you, like to, to the point I was going to say is like one of them is playing with other top players and the others playing in a, uh, let's, let's get her 50 shots. She and really like, is. There's, Steph, though. She there's, really is there's Steph. pros and there's pros and cons to, to both of them. How many have I watched to the chat? The vast majority of the last three. Years. I'll put it that way. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, I want to get to some callers. I want yeah. people's opinions on where the Warriors will finish. The rest of the way going forward, where your head's at with the season. 
Sorry, I got a tash on. To the goons. You know what's really going to be funny? I really think the Lakers and the Warriors are going to be the 7-8, and eight, and we're going to get another bullshit play in 7-8 game in L.A. for whatever reason. It's been – it's oh, mainly two – Bron's going to see three rims? <laughs> it's five rims. Five rims. Let's keep it pushing <laughs> just to get, increase the narratives. Uh, but I think the Malik Monk injury actually matters a little bit more, and they sneakily have a – a little bit of a tougher schedule as well. They play like the Knicks, I believe, as well. And couple, and sometimes they play like a couple of the tougher schedules as games like the Clippers. And then they also have to face the Suns without like two rotation players. It's like, yeah, that's a big issue. So the Suns might lose en- enough games for them to fall into like that ninth spot. And then the Kings, I, I really just worry about the Kings, actually. They've been losing. You thought the Warriors have been losing some winnable games? They've been losing to – the Kings have been losing to literal lottery teams. <laughs> like, at a certain point, it's like, um, I like Fox, but I, I don't know if he can pull this off at this point. The Kings, yeah. by the way, are, are right now tied with the Jazz. But, yeah, they, they look like – they. I, I've, I watch a lot of Kings games just – just because they're on at night, they're the only team worth watching. Time zone, it's time zone. Portland. Sorry, not watching. Did they like each not other? Watching Wiz, not watching Wiz Hornets at 4 well, p.m. Definitely, definitely not. Definitely not. But like the King, I don't, I don't know if the King, the Kings. I don't know if they enjoy playing with each other as much as like the team just isn't as fun. I think last year's like the beam stuff was cool, but you know it sometimes happens with a team where you try to run stuff back, like kind of gimmicky. I'm not saying. Like it, that, it's not a cool thing, but it's like gimmicky stuff like that. The vibes are amazing. Like you try to run that back in the second season, and you hit a little bit of a rough patch. What they had, it's just like not as, like it's just I, I don't know. The team's got a little weird vibe to it. I think. Um, it's so what you're saying is Mike back. Brown has no hold on the locker room. Is what you're saying? I think Mike Brown should come back to the Warriors. The Warriors need Mike Brown. I do think there's something to be said for if you're not progressing you start running into different issues and the Kings, like they're not necessarily worse than they were last year, but like, it's not as yeah. cool for them to be like a 46 win team. Right. Right. And that, and when that happens, you, it, it, the expectations, right. It, it's yeah. like, we always talk about it's, a team when, when they come up, it's great. Like the Niners are going to win 13 11 or 13 games next season and nobody's going to be happy <laughs> because you know what I mean? No how one's going to be how happy. About the, Boston, the Boston Celtics. Sure. Right. Yeah. They're dominant. No one gives a flying fuck because <laughs> like, right. Until they win it all, none of this matters. Like they're taking care of their business, but like, you know, until, until, until they get over the hump, it's like, okay, cool. We've seen you do this before. Um, I kind the of Boston thing, is, yeah, because they're that good. Yeah, the Boston thing is going to get real nasty because I've been hearing all year long that they are the most dominant team since the seventeen Warriors. I'm like, come on, man! Like, I know Porzingis has been a hand and glove fit, but like, let's just stop the hyperbole. Like, at a certain point, they got to be serious people and just stop dribbling off their feet for two seconds and just get the job done at some point. Yeah. Yeah. That, that Boston one is fascinating to me. Cause if there's one team that I think is like the Warriors, the Denver Nuggets, um, that that's the one is, uh, but the Denver, but the Denver Nuggets also like to Sam was saying earlier, like they're not coming out and saying F you guys, right. They're not saying you guys are disrespecting us. You know, you guys are this and that they're just like, you know what? We're good enough. We're, we're, we're going to be the one seat kind of half-assing it, which is unbelievable. And then they're going to turn it on. Hopefully, Jamal Murray is healthy. I think Jokic is playing hurt a little bit too. So if they stay healthy, they're, they'll, they'll, I, I think they'll boat race it. But we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I- yeah. It's just like frustrating to watch that the Nuggets have been like a historically clutch team since like the past 10 years. It's like, oh man. At some point, it's like you got to give their flowers to them if they can stay healthy. That's the main thing. And I don't know if Jamal Murray can stay healthy again for another playoff run at this point. So we'll see. We will see. I, I'm. I think they're. If they're healthy, I don't think anyone touches them. Period. I, I'm not moved by anything I see in the regular season. I think their ceiling is just so much higher. They also know how to play with each other. Like 
what all I need to see from Denver is the close the the end of a close game when they decide to get serious. I'm like, oh, they're, they're gonna blow everyone out of the water because they know exactly how they want to play. At like Jokic, Murray, Porter, Gordon, they all know each other like the back of their hand, and they have the talent. So yeah, mm. that's where I'm at with them. Yeah. Um, honestly, here's where I'm at with this. I I say we. I say we call it right now. I say we're we're back Tuesday night. Let's see how it goes after the 